uh, and I'm going to take you through what different countries did. And Professor Sagan covered, so why did these countries, why would they have wanted to do it? And I'm going to tell you more, how did they do it, you know, from a technical standpoint. So first, these four. So Israel, you know, from everything that we know, in the 1950s already, struck up relationship with France. In the 1960s, France actually built a plutonium-producing reactor. They called it a research reactor in Israel. They also actually developed and helped them with a reprocessing capability. So they now would only not be able to do a nuclear research, make plutonium, but reprocess and extract that plutonium. And then, at least as best as we know, it appears, and you know, this is peculiar relation uh, to your simulation, Israel and Iran worked together on the bomb <coughs> during the Shah's day. And South Africa was in the mix also. That's really not quite well understood. Uh, the best is to read Abner Cohen's book, or a couple of books, including The World's Worst Kept Secret, uh, Israel and the Bomb. And it is generally believed that, that Israel uh, had the bomb around 1968. This was plutonium, because that's the way they went. Reactor, France, reprocessing France, and then the Israelis did the rest. The weaponization appears to have been some combination uh, with, the, uh, with Iran and South Africa, including possibly a, a nuclear test that's still disputed today uh, in 1979. Okay, in, in India, uh, uh, by the way, the, the picture is Baba, uh, who uh, was the um, uh, Indian uh, nuclear uh, superhero. He's a fantastically uh, gifted uh, scientist. So India took advantage uh, of uh, President Eisenhower's atoms for peace, uh, and Canada built them a reactor, heavy water reactor. By the way, the Israeli also heavy water. Whenever you hear heavy water reactor or gas graphite, you know, the, the red flag ought to go up because, again, it makes good plutonium, bad for electricity. So uh, Canada built a reactor. U.S. supplied the heavy water. Uh, and the uh, Indians were there, happy as can be, doing a lot of their indigenous stuff, doing research. But since that reactor not only did research, it also made plutonium. And lo and behold, they then went ahead and extracted that plutonium and did a nuclear device, tested a nuclear device in 1974 that they called the peaceful nuclear explosion. But that, of course, demonstrated they now had the capacity and the capability to build a bomb. And then they went ahead and did enrichment also of uranium, and they pretty much uh, used the covert global market in order to help uh, get the centrifuge technologies. In 19 98, then India actually decided they would test another nuclear device, and this time they said it's a bomb. Actually, they tested five of them and said, now we're a nuclear weapon state. So Pakistan, uh, so Pakistan, uh, President Bhutto made the decision that they will eat grass if they have to, but they're going to build a bomb. Uh, A.Q. Khan, one of their scientists, uh, went to Urenco, the European consortium that did centrifuge technologies. Uh, and there he learned the trade. He stole the secrets, stole the drawings, uh, and then took those back to Pakistan to help them build the capacity to do enrichment. The Pakistanis then also had help from the Chinese, at least the best as we know and suspect. They got a little bit of highly enriched uranium from the Chinese. They got one of the Chinese weapons designs that was tested. Uh, and then the Pakistanis also tried to get reactor uh, and reprocessing capabilities from the French. But with American pressure, the French pulled back, but the Pakistanis were able to finish it up. And it's generally believed by 1987, Pakistan had the capability, was able to enrich uranium to 90% was able to build a, a uranium bomb. And I should have mentioned more specifically, uranium works both in the gun assembly and in the implosion uh, assembly. And built from uh, what appears to be an implosion uh, assembly bomb. They were ready by 1987. They did not want to test because of the pressure from the United States until the Indians tested. Two weeks after the Indians tested five, 
the Pakistanis tested six. You know why six? The one for 1974 from the Indians. So they're now even at six and six and they were. South Africa, a really interesting case and I'm sure uh, Professor Sagan mentioned it. Uh, you know, as to why did South Africa want a bomb? Well, let me tell you about how they did it. Uh, Adams for Peace, the Americans built them a little reactor, uh, and then the, the uh, South Africans decided they would build the bomb, and they're going to do it with a rather novel technique of enriching. Instead of centrifuges, do it by the aerodynamic nozzle technique. Uh, they went to school on the French, and then particularly on the Germans, and there's some indications that they may have had some collaboration with Pakistanis also, and then there's this uh, collaboration, potential collaboration with Israel. Uh, here are the six bombs that they built. South Africa then decided to stick with the implosion, the simple bomb, but they had also done a lot of work for delivering and the possibility of building a, uh, an implosion bomb. 